so I have my list over here that I got from the internet you'll need margarine or butter vanilla essence or vanilla extracts to some people milk four large eggs baking soda three tablespoons salt a cup of sugar a sift to sift your flour that I'll not use flour and a mixing bowl and not forgetting your wooden spoon to mix a knife to cut your butter I'll quickly just go through the list that I sourced from the internet I'll link the website that I found the recipe from in the description box so I'm just quickly going through the list to make sure that all my products or the things that I need to do to make the things to be done so we'll firstly need seven cups of all-purpose flour it was very hard opening the flour <laughs> very hard and it was very hard getting the cup to actually fit in the packet of flour because it's, it's a small amount of flour So yep, we're going to quickly just measure up our flour, starting with a cup of flour. So after measuring 7 cups of flour, then you follow up with salt. Just make sure you get a tablespoon of salt. Baking soda, 3 teaspoons. And you mix your dry ingredients together. And mix good. Get your one cup of sugar. In this instance, I'm using brown sugar because that's the type of sugar we use at home. And continue mixing your dry ingredients together. You are going to put your dry ingredients aside so we can make space to mix our wet ingredients. You'll get a bowl to mix your wet ingredients on. Your wet ingredients are your eggs, milk and vanilla extract. So you'll start cracking all four of your large eggs in a bowl and mix them. Mix them till they're yellow honey. Just go in it. Mix it with a fork or um, a whisk if you have one or if you have a mixer you can just mix your ingredients in that but in this instance I'm just using my hand <laughs> and a fork of course so you'll, con so you'll continue mixing your eggs put three caps of vanilla essence or extract to some Vanilla essence smells so good Like it smells so good. It's just like a breath of just freshness 
and it makes scones cookies muffins smell great like your neighbors will even smell good mm, you'll get your milk and you'll put two cups of milk into your eggs So after putting the second cup of milk, you will mix your wheat ingredients. So I'll just quickly clear my working station and mix the milk, vanilla essence and two eggs together. That's your wheat ingredients. Put them aside. Get your brick of margarine or rama or butter, whatever you want to call it. And you're gonna slice it in half so the reason why we chop the butter it's because it makes it easier to work with like it makes it very easy to work with like with breaking with your fingers we'll get to that part so you'll take your brick of rama chop it into small pieces in this instance they're not really that small into chunks actually because you're gonna actually break it down with your fingers and I wish I had softened my butter, but I just decided early mornings that mm, today I want to bake. So you're just going to quickly chop it up. And just throw it in your bowl with the dry ingredients. Throw it in the honey. And then I've noticed that my batter is not enough, so I'm just going to cut it a little bit more and just break it in there. So I'm going to fold this butter for later when I grease my pan. So I'm just going to quickly fold it, put it aside, and I'm going to use it to grease my pan. And then you're going to go in and dirty honey and break the butter using your fingertips mixing your flour and butter together it's okay if you see a bit of chunks in your beta it's gonna get cooked in the oven it's gonna melt and it's gonna taste good so just quickly work the flour and the butter together and yeah so till you see it a bit crumbly wise so just gonna work it with your fingertips um if you have a mixer then you can mix with your mixer but i don't have that so i'm going to quickly just mix it with my fingertips go in there honey like go in there and make sure your hands are clean please wash your hands before you mix your beta together wash your hands make sure they're clean and dry and yeah sanitize but no in this instance you can't sanitize because you're working with food your food is going to taste of a sanitizer no just quickly wash your hands with soap and water and go in and dirty in that bowl honey so yeah we're breaking the batter and making it crumbly you're gonna quickly work your flour and butter together and we'll go preheat our oven into 200 degrees. Mix your beta using a wooden spoon, creating a hole in the middle. Take your wet ingredients, beat them a little, and pour maybe half a cup or half a bowl and mix with your wooden spoon. But if you're comfortable, you can still use your hands. Make sure they're clean. Continue mixing. It's very hard to work with a scone better because it's a bit stiff you'll continue mixing pour the rest of your wet ingredients and continue to mix I'm sure I've gained a muscle day by mixing because mm, sis it was hard it was really hard mixing just continue mixing your beta Make sure everything is all mixed well. There's no flour left behind. Your wet ingredients and your dry ingredients must be combined together. Continue mixing with your wooden spoon. 
in this part i've realized that it's hard to mix with a spoon so i went to quickly go wash my hands once again i know it took a long time i just needed to just quickly wash my hands because it says i need to go in with the better so this is the part where I go in with my hands knead the dough together mixing your flour and your wet ingredients to give out nice consistency if you see a chunk of butter in your dough it's perfectly normal it's gonna get cooked in the oven and don't forget to preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius it's a nice cause ovens now give you an option to grill bake or um, preheat so I'm gonna quickly put my oven on preheat and knead the dough knead go in sister quickly knead again it's okay if it sticks on your hand it's completely normal as I've said as long as your hands are clean it shouldn't be a problem After mixing your wet ingredients and your dry ingredients, this is how the batter looks like. Set it aside, clean up your station, wipe the countertop because you're going to need it. Um, so in this instance, because my hands were dirty, I'm going to ask my little brother to step in and help me. So it's quickly going to wipe the kitchen counter. Oh, excuse the noise in the background. I've tried so hard to minimize the noise. So you are gonna sprinkle flour, a handful of flour into your counter. Get a piece of your dough so you can knead it. Doesn't really matter if it's big or small. Work it with your hands. Knead it till there is no crumbledness or, I don't know how to put it, just knead the dough, honey. So in this case, I do not have a rolling pin. I don't know what type of household am I living in that doesn't have a rolling pin. Um, so I'm going to use my water bottle. It's glass. And you're going to continue kneading your dough. Knead. This is so therapeutic. Like, this is so therapeutic. Knead that dough. Yes, you know, by kneading the dough, you are actually warming up the beads and pieces that are in the batter to melt because your hands are warm. You're putting love in the whole thing. So I'm trying to get rid of that. So you're going to put more flour on top. Give it a little spank. <laughs> okay, section it into two pieces. Set one aside. And use the other one stick some flour get some flour into your bottle so it doesn't stick on it then roll so when it comes to rolling I don't know how then people love their scones or biscuits so you're just gonna roll okay the lid is just making it so hard for me to work so I'm just gonna put it aside and continue rolling roll and roll so I don't have a cookie cutter so I'll use one of the cups that I use to measure the milk the red cup on the side 
so as you roll your dough try to move it around so you can get equal parts of the dough so your scones can be even okay that should be it get your cup some flour and cut through the dough in circles okay that's round about it get a pan grease it with some leftover butter so your scones don't stick to the pan but if you have um, greasing spray cooking spray you can just use that but in this case I am using butter or margarine then you're gonna quickly lay your scones in the tray like that I'll put that aside while I roll more. So you're going to put the excess batter on the side, getting your baking tray and filling up the squares that did not have any scones in them. And yeah. So that's how they look like. We're going to quickly just pop them in the oven and let them to cook for 15 minutes. If you do like this video so far, don't forget to like, click the subscribe button and to share. So I'll continue rolling my beta and creating more scones. And this is the scones cooking in the oven for 15 minutes. And this is how they look like as the end results. If you do like this video, do give it a big thumbs up and thank you till next time. Bye.